Imagine a state decided to secede from the USA, what military options would be available to the president? As we explore into this intriguing hypothetical, it's essential to look at our history, specifically the American Civil War, as it serves as the most direct historical precedent. Cast your mind back to the 1860s when several southern states discontented with the Union voted to secede, leading to the formation of the Confederate States of America. This act of rebellion didn't sit well with President Abraham Lincoln. He deemed secession illegal, a move that was both audacious and unprecedented. Lincoln didn't stop at mere declarations. He initiated a robust military response designed to compel the Confederate States back into the Union's fold. This military response was multifaceted and comprehensive. It involved raising armies, a challenging task considering the times, and strategically blockading southern ports to stifle the Confederacy's resources. The culmination of this response was a large-scale invasion of the South, a Herculean effort to preserve the Union. Interesting to note is that before the Civil War, there was no clear consensus on the legality of secession or the appropriate federal response. It was a gray area in American politics, a gap that Lincoln filled with his decisive actions. Through his commitment to preserving the Union, Lincoln established a firm precedent. His stance was clear. Unilateral secession is illegal, and if a state attempts such, the federal government won't hesitate to use coercion and military force to maintain the Union. So the Civil War not only redefined the American socio-political landscape, but also set a critical precedent for handling secession. This historical precedent set by Lincoln continues to echo in the corridors of power, setting the stage for the president's powers in the event of a state attempting to secede. It's a precedent steeped in the belief that the Union is sacrosanct, and any attempt to disrupt it will be met with the full might of the federal government. Indeed, this historical precedent sets the stage for the president's powers in the event of a state attempting to secede. As commander-in-chief, the president has broad authorities to respond to domestic threats or insurrections. This power vested in the presidency is not just a ceremonial title. It represents the immense responsibility and authority the president holds, particularly in times of domestic crisis. When we talk about domestic threats this could include a state attempting to secede from the Union. In such a scenario the President has the authority to deploy troops domestically. This is not a decision taken lightly, but it's an option nonetheless. The President could send in the military to ensure order, protect federal property, and enforce the laws of the land. But the President's powers go beyond just deploying troops. In extreme cases the President can suspend habeas corpus rights. This means that individuals can be arrested and detained without a trial. This is a drastic measure usually reserved for situations of rebellion or invasion when public safety may be at risk. And if a situation escalates even further, the president can impose martial law, essentially replacing civilian law enforcement with military authority. This would be an extraordinary step, signaling a severe crisis in which normal laws and rights are temporarily set aside for the sake of public safety and order. Now if a state officially attempted to secede, the president could declare this an act of insurrection. This would be a bold move effectively labeling the seceding state as a rebellious entity. In response the president could use force to compel the state to comply with federal law. But here's where things could get complicated. Deploying war powers domestically against a state would likely stir up a hornet's nest of legal challenges. Questions would arise about the limits of presidential power, the legality of secession, and the balance between federal and state rights. It's a thorny issue that could end up in the courts, potentially even reaching the Supreme Court. And let's not forget about the court of public opinion. The president would need to carefully consider the potential backlash from citizens, both within the seceding state and across the country. After all, using military force against our own citizens is not a decision to be made lightly. So, while the president does have broad powers to respond to a secession attempt, it's a complex and delicate balancing act. It's not just about military might and legal authority, but also about navigating the political, social and moral challenges that would inevitably arise. In the end, the president's powers provide significant potential for a robust response to any attempted secession. But it's clear that these powers are not a simple solution to a complex problem. They are tools to be used wisely, carefully, and as a last resort, in the pursuit of preserving the Union and upholding the Constitution. The U.S. Armed Forces offer an immense range of capabilities to project power within U.S. territory against any rebelling faction or state. 
When we speak of military capabilities, we are talking about a vast spectrum of options, each designed to serve a specific purpose. At one end of this spectrum, we have small special forces units. These elite teams are expertly trained for high-risk missions, capable of operating covertly in hostile environments. Their tasks might include reconnaissance, sabotage, or the extraction of key individuals. Moving along the spectrum, we come to large ground troop deployments. These are the backbone of any military operation, providing the manpower and firepower necessary to control territory, protect key sites, and engage enemy forces. In the event of a secession attempt, these troops could be used to secure state capital buildings, communication infrastructures, and transit hubs. The air power of the U.S. military is another vital asset. With a fleet of advanced aircraft and unmanned drones, the military can conduct precision airstrikes against strategic targets, provide air support for ground troops, and maintain air superiority over contested regions. In the digital age, the battlefield extends into the virtual realm. Cyber attacks can cripple a secessionist state's infrastructure, disrupt communications, and sow confusion among its ranks. This is a less visible but no less potent aspect of military operations. It's important to note however, that the use of these capabilities would not be without its challenges. A direct large-scale military intervention would be a complex operation, fraught with both operational and political risks. Arresting state leaders who approve secession would likely be an early priority. This would serve to disrupt the leadership of the secessionist movement, and potentially deter further acts of rebellion. However, such a move could also inflame tensions, leading to broader clashes and possibly even full-scale civil conflict. In such a scenario, federal forces would likely overwhelm state military resources, especially if the military remains unified under federal control. But this wouldn't necessarily mean a quick or easy victory. Counterinsurgency campaigns, aimed at controlling entire states and populations, can be lengthy and complex. They require not just military superiority, but also a deep understanding of the local political and social dynamics, as well as a comprehensive strategy for winning hearts and minds. Furthermore, the use of military force on home soil would raise a host of legal and ethical questions. It would likely spark fierce debate both domestically and internationally, with critics arguing that it represents an excessive use of force and a violation of civil liberties. The president would need to carefully weigh these considerations against the need to preserve the union and uphold the rule of law. So, while the U.S. military is certainly capable of responding forcefully to a secession attempt, it is not a decision a sitting president would want to make. It would mean crossing a significant threshold, with potential consequences that could reverberate for generations to come. In conclusion, the military's capabilities provide a powerful tool for the president to respond to any attempted secession. But like any tool, it must be used wisely and judiciously, with a clear understanding of its potential impacts and implications. As we've seen throughout history, the use of military force is rarely a simple or straightforward solution. Rather, it is a complex and consequential decision, one that demands careful thought, strategic planning, and a deep respect for the values and principles that we, as a nation, hold dear. From the Civil War to the present day, the precedent stands firm. Unilateral secession is illegal, and the federal government will use coercion and military force if necessary to preserve the Union. As Commander-in-Chief, the President can deploy a wide range of military and federal resources against domestic threats, including troops domestically, suspending habeas corpus rights, and even imposing martial law in extreme cases. The military capabilities of the U.S. armed forces are vast and versatile, ready to project power within U.S. territory against any rebelling state. Yet, it's important to remember that presidents likely prefer to avoid direct invasions of states when possible due to the political and social complexities involved. In the unlikely event of a state attempting to secede, the president would walk away with a label that no president would want in his historical biography. That label is President of the Disunion States of America.